Well, welcome back to the Ellis Bandsaw Saga, chapter who knows. We finally got a replacement motor, so here we are, two weeks into owning a brand new saw, and I'm changing the motor out. Like, God, that feels good. Let's do it and see if that solves the... Hey, plug it directly into the outlet problem. Let me show you what it does now, and we'll show you why I'm replacing the, the motor. So, yes, the saw is plugged into an extension cord, and it's probably a 50-foot extension cord. Pretty big cord though. And uh, I'm gonna see if this thing pulses like it has been. It's getting worse. So that's what it's doing. Once it's going, it runs fine. And then once you restart it, Problem's not nearly as bad, and it gets kind of progressively better as you use the saw. Now, Frank from Arc 3 and I have plugged this thing directly into a 125 volt outlet that is on a 20 amp or 30 amp breaker that powers all sorts of other machines just fine, and it did the same thing. So quit telling me it's the extension cord. It's not the extension cord. But, I was really hoping to see that the replacement motor is of a different brand, but alas, it is the exact same motor. It's got this plug, because all you have to do is plug it into the thing. So let's, let's set about replacing it. I'm gonna pull this motor off. Looks like there's two set screws here in the step pulley. There's a wing nut here and a uh, some fashionable thing to this, I believe this is to loosen the tension on the motor and then you got four bolts to unbolt it. And this looks flush, so I'll remember that and set the new one up just the same. So let's do that. To unplug the saw, okay, for all your safety officers. And get a socket set and some Allen keys. And as Wyatt showed me, needle nose pliers. Yeah, that wing nut was on there, huh? Yeah. Kind of defeats the purpose of a wing nut. So that thing releases the tension. So I can take this belt off. Okay. Now we can take that pulley off and unbolt the motor. Looks like I might have to take these cotter pins out and take this pivot pin out to get to the motor bolts easier. I'm guessing, guessing this Allen key is going to be metric because it is a Chinese motor, but maybe I'm wrong. Nope, it's metric. It's kind of loose too, but. Okay, I might need a better Allen key here. Let's see what the manual has to say. Ellis miter band saw installation and operating instructions, parts list, removing and replacing blade, vertical sawing position, saw adjustments. So there's nothing in here about replacing the motor or removing this pulley. So we're on our own. This motor pivots on this pin here, so I'm gonna take the cotter pins out of here. They're only kind of bent, so it's not that hard to remove. And now I'm gonna unplug the motor and uh, try to get this pin out. That is, of course, if it's even meant to come out. It really doesn't want to come out, does it? All right, got the motor off. Now we gotta take this plate off and put it on the new motor. Okay. Three bolts. Not four, three bolts. Hold it on, seems legit. I guess they had to leave room for that little wedge that tensions the plate. So this is flush, remember that. 
Ellis, this is your redemption opportunity. Even though I'm already replacing the motor on a brand new saw, there is still room for redemption. Very little, but there still is. Now just do everything in reverse. Now we'll put the pulley back on. So the new motor came with its own key. Looks like we do have a little metal burr inside the keyway. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but there's a little metal burr in the keyway. So I'm gonna go file that very gently so I don't mar up the new key. All right, clean that up just a bit. And we'll go on with it. I'd like not to have to hit it with a hammer. This is cute. The key stock they sent over has burrs on the edges. No wonder I got a burr in the keyway. There's a burr on the key. The burr on the key. God, that, that key fits like crap. Okay, I've inserted the key in the pulley all the way. I'm sure there's some machinist out there saying I shouldn't do that first, but whatever. Just go on now. Okay, that went on a lot better than before. So, I might have gone too far. <laughs> Sorry. It's too good. Yeah, I'm hitting, hitting up against this metal casing. So, pull it out just a hair. There we go. Something like that. About the same clearance as that one. You go a little bit more. Because the motor, motor has adjustment whole thing can slide around. So that should be okay. All right, so let's tighten our set screws. Set screw, oh, let's see. I need a hammer to drive this key in. Now it's too tight again. Let's pull this out. I'm gonna call that good. So, tighten down this one. That pushes the key in the keyway. And then tighten down this one. This one engages in the shaft. Nice and tight. Run the belt back on. Motor's all the way down. Put it on the second pulley. Then step up to that pulley. Now we Tension it and tighten the wind nut down. There it is. The motor has been replaced. Everything spins freely. I will plug the motor plug under here. Plug this, plug that in there, I guess. Why would they have the plug facing down when the motor is on top? I was gonna come get you for this. Now, should I do as Alice says I should do and plug this directly into a wall outlet or should I run it off the extension cord like I want to? I think you should run it off the extension cord. I kinda wanna plug it directly into the outlet for the first startup. First startup? Just to in the, eliminate all the variables. I'll roll it back there. Okay, here we are. Outlet, drill press that's currently plugged into the outlet. Look at that. No starting issues there. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta get this. Yeah, okay, look, see? It's coming from the machine. From the machine. All one piece, all the way up. Factory plug into the outlet. 
Literally nothing else running off of that circuit right now. Hydraulics are locked. Blade is propped up. Kill switch is off. You ready? <laughs> it did the same thing. <laughs> It still sucks. Try it again. Yeah. Fine. Well, that's what the last one did. The last one would stumble the first time, and the more you use it, the, the better. Look at how well balanced this motor is. How in the world does it run that rough? Even that feels smoother than the motor. My belt alignment is perfect. Here, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I will loosen the tension just a bit. People keep telling me like, take the belt off and see if the motor starts without load. Well, the point like, of the whole thing is with the load. Well, also this is a well, worm drive gearbox. Like that's no load. I think the motor is directly driving the saw. Also, as far as wing nuts go, this one is extremely difficult to get off. So, we'll rock the motor forward. We'll drop and have this like rubber wedge. So we'll put it barely on, okay? It does feel a little looser. So maybe I had a little too much tension on it, but whatever, dude. Ready? I mean, now it's been warmed up, so. It still vibrates a lot. Yeah, dude, that's ridiculous. This one sounds worse. That, listen to that. And it sounds like there's loose, loose metal. Oh, oh look, look at this! Look at this! Straight from the factory. I'm sure of this one. That's crazy. Oh, that just cut the sound out. Uh, I cut that vibration, that, uh, the metal vibrating. Is that what did it? I mean, the whole thing is still vibrating, but... Yeah, it's not rattling, I guess. But, now I'm gonna check all the damn screws. Apparently I need to be Alice's quality control guy. I gotta admit, I like the saw The saw's lot. rad. I can't, I mean, obviously Ellis didn't build this motor, and I think that's the problem. I'm not saying Ellis should be vertically integrated and have a motor factory in their warehouse. But I mean, when this piece of equipment can make the entire saw look bad, it's not a great move. Wait, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Well, there you I go, think, it's fixed. I would like to get another start capacitor for one of these motors. Well, the fun part is Ellis now wants ARC-3 to send the old motor back to them so they can do their own testing because they don't believe any of us. <laughs> well, that's not what they said, but that's what they're saying. We have documentation. Frank and I went and tested out every outlet in this shop with a voltmeter, and they all read 125 volts. Yeah. And they're all on a service that was installed three years ago with brand new breakers. And I'm in an industrial three-phase 220 power network. It's not my shop's power. Not to mention all the other shit we run. There's all nothing, the time. nothing that has problems like this. Yeah. Well, okay, that's the end, I guess. See ya. I guess we should, I'm gonna run it off the extension cord. Yeah. Oh look, it acts the same. Shocker. Goodbye.